give the um, thanks that is well deserved to Miss Amy because um, obviously none of this would be happening. Um, I think every single one of us can agree that this was definitely the strongest advance that we've yes. ever been to. Um, we've been to many fall retreats in the past. Some of you, this is your first. But truly, I think um, we've never experienced anything as far as the speakers and the intimacy and the bonfire and just the fun and the people. So will everybody just stand up and give Amy the round of applause that she deserves for being here. I don't know if it will help, but um, if it's worth anything, I really do hope that we are able to do it here at Nebraska City again sometime. So I'm just going to throw that little plug in. So. <laughs> um, I want to start out also by just saying thank you to uh, my amazing units. I want you to stand up, and I want the um, fearless on fire women to stand up as well. One recruited, 
two of them decided that they needed to go with somebody else, which was only appropriate because they had been given products while they were in college and they had other consultants to work with, so I accepted that. But I was kind of frustrated because number four, well, she decided to sign up with number three. And that didn't make any sense to me. I called Amy and in fact I was emotionally distressed. I was laying in my bed sorry. But Amy, you told me that if we were supposed to be go give and marry Kelly. And you told me that we don't treat each other any way but treat others how you're supposed to be treated. But Amy, why is it supposed to be like that? She's supposed to be on my team. She was on my grand opening. <laughs> I had to take a few breaths after she was <laughs> laughing at me. I don't know. But <laughs> she just said, she goes, you know what, Buffy, things happen. But when you release something, God will bless you. He'll bless you doubly later on. So I had to release it, I suppose. And um, did you know that when I released it, things did come back to me doubly. I soon added two more team members. And I was then a red jacket. And how do you feel when you become a red jacket in this company? Stronger. I was felt feeling really, really strong at that time because I had three team members and I was actually learning how to coach those team members and I was actually learning how to kind of work my business a little bit more and I was also kind of learning a little bit about this like emotional management stuff that <laughs> you are supposed to learn while you're growing in Mary Kay. And I wasn't laying on my bed anymore crying when little things would happen. I would say, okay, I'll just figure it out. And God would bless me if I release things, and I was learning how to release. I ended up soon having my first party, you know, that one on your own, and um, it, it went okay, I guess. I, I think I gave away about $80 worth of samples that day because <laughs> they were all wet and everything, and so I just threw everything I had on my table, and I didn't know how to <laughs> teach color because I didn't know how to wear color yet. And so I just kind of said, well, you guys know how to wear makeup, just put it all on. And so I had some sales that night. I don't know how many sales I had, or I don't even know if I asked for bookings or if I even closed them or anything like that. But I do know that I was really feeling strong. When a few months later, one of my customers called me back and she says, Buffy, I'm loving the products that you gave me. In fact, I'm already out of the eyeliner. I'd love to reorder the eyeliner. And I said, okay, awesome. You know, I, I have no idea where my sales receipt is, but can you tell me what color that is? And she says, yeah, I have it right here in front of me, and it's a cappuccino. And I was like, awesome. And I'm looking in a lookbook because I couldn't remember what the price was. And I said, gosh, that's so weird. We don't have a cappuccino eyeliner, but we have a cappuccino lip liner. Oh. She goes, well, been wearing a lip liner on my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> She was putting on lipstick, and she put on a lip liner, and she didn't even use a mirror. And I remember looking over to my friend, who was my first team member, my senior, the one who made me a senior consultant, and she was a lot like me, kind of a plain Jane. She was actually a rodeo girl. She showed up in her boots and her belt buckle that day, actually, remember? And I looked over to her, and I said, did you bring lipstick? She goes, I haven't even opened my lipstick yet. And I said, I haven't either. I said, I kind of feel out of place. And she goes, yeah, I, I haven't even tried any of the lipsticks yet. 
and we've been in the business for mm, about six months. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember a lot of recognition going on at that um, event, and everyone was being recognized, and I don't think I was being recognized, but I might have been because I was a red jacket. But I remember this lady standing over the doorway. She was waiting to walk in, and I didn't know it, but I remember looking at her going, who the heck does she think she is? She's <laughs> wearing leather. Uh -huh. Leather skirt. She's about eight foot tall. <laughs> she had on these black boots that like went up past her knee. I'm thinking, seriously, she dresses like that. <laughs> she had on this black jacket and these gold buttons, and she had on these long earrings. And all of a sudden, they announced that this guest speaker was coming, and they gave her all these accolades. And her name was something like Stacy James. <laughs> and when she came up to speak in front of everybody, I tell you what. All of a sudden, all of us in the room were feeling stronger, a lot stronger. <laughs> when you listen to Stacey James speak, you learn a lot. And I learned a lot in that fall advance. And I remember one of them, it was just a simple skill, but it was about customer service. And ironically, Amy asked me the other day to talk about customer service. I thought that was fun. I remember Amy coming to Kearney, Nebraska to start doing some events, because I didn't have a director in our area. Amy was three hours away from me. And I remember her coming and standing up in front of everybody and speaking and com comparing myself. And I remember thinking, I could never do what she does. I don't think I want to go past Red Jacket because she has these cute nails. And she has this cute hair and her makeup is always perfect. And she has this suit that she wears. She looks like a million bucks. And I have bunions. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wear high heels. I'm not going to wear high heels. And I'm not ever going to be one of those sales directors because I can't be like Amy Gamboyan. But as I was growing, um, about two years had gone into my business, and Johnny and I were actually expecting our first baby. And I was actually at that moment feeling really, really stronger. No, just fat. <laughs> <laughs> so at that time, I decided that I was going to go to seminar because I actually had the time. It was summer, and I had school a lot, and I'd been taking classes for my master's degree, and. Um, I had a little bit of a window where, yeah, I could probably fit this little seminar thing in. And my sister said she'd go with me, and my sister lived in Arizona, so we were going to make this little girlfriend's weekend because, heaven forbid, we were like, we're with somebody we didn't know. Because that's just weird. And so I'm like, okay, if you go, I'll go. And we made a last-minute decision. We were both going to go to seminar. And um, to, to my surprise, I got there, and I actually opened up this envelope in our packet at seminar, and it said that I had special seating at this luncheon. And I thought, well, what's this? And I asked Amy about it, and Amy says, I don't know. Sometimes they do some of this stuff, and they surprise us. So we go to this lunch at seminar, and I was sitting at this head table, and on one side of me was Amy Gamboyne, and on another side was that tall lady in the leather that I met a while ago, Stacey James. Okay, She's sitting on the other side of me. And then on this other side of her was this hilarious guy who got up and spoke, and his name was Sean Key. And he actually got to have this one-on-one -on -one time with me and talk to me, and one of the questions that he asked me was, what's next? What are you going to do now? And I remember thinking, I'm going to seminar. That's what's next. But I didn't have a clue. I didn't have plans. I didn't have any idea what I wanted to pursue in this business because I really hadn't thought past it. I knew that I had a baby on the way, and I had kind of these weird gut feelings that I didn't want to stay a teacher, but I love teaching. Why in the world would I give up something that I really enjoy? And why would I give up something that pays some great insurance? And why would I give up something that you know, I had a passion for, I went to college for, I earned my master's degree for, in fact, I just finished my master's degree for it. And so why in the world would I ever give it up? But something about that seminar made me feel stronger. stronger. I realized that I could. I could do Mary Kay full-time, and I decided that, you know what, school has started, but I have this window of opportunity where I could really focus on Mary Kay, and it's called maternity leave. And so when uh, I told Amy, I, I'm going to go into DIQ after seminar, after that seminar, I said, I'm going to go into DIQ, and she was, Buffy, can I ask you when? <laughs> when are you going to do this? When are you going to fit it in? As a teacher, you're gone from 7 in the morning to 7 at night, not including, it is fall, you're coaching volleyball. You don't get home till about 10 o'clock on some nights. And I said, I've got maternity leave. When I get back on maternity leave, I, or when I'm gone on maternity leave, is when I'll focus on DIQ. So DIQ came. Actually, that was October, so I'm still teaching full time, and I started my DIQ process then. I had the baby in November. Um, finished up DIQ, and the 
last day of January, so brand new sales director at the beginning of February, which is also the same, same time that I needed to go back to school because maternity, like, like, maternity leave was over. So for the rest of the year, I ended up um, doing both at the same time. And you know what? When you're actually doing both and you're doing them really well, it makes you feel really stronger. Uh -huh. I was feeling strong. I was great. I'm thinking, I can handle this. I can do both careers. Why in the world would I ever give it up? And you had that balancing that you're trying to figure out. Why would I want to do it? I kept doing it. I did decide to finally resign from teaching. And when I did that, you guys, everything soared. When I was able to focus on Mary Kay full time, gave, gave it my all, that's when Amy, she read the accolades, had an amazing first year as a sales director, and did all the sales director programs. And I think it's so much fun when you are achieving, you're feeling stronger. stronger. Two years ago, we were in a position where we needed, we wanted to sell our house. So the reason why we wanted to sell our house was because my father-in-law was very, very ill. My father-in-law was 89 at the time, and my mother-in-law is 17 years younger, and um, we wanted to be able to move them in with us so we could help take care of them. And we decided that we were going to put our house up for sale, and everybody in town thought that we were just crazy. Why in the world would you sell a house like that? But we knew why. We didn't know where. Very small town, so it's not like you have tons of options to go. God planted a house in front of us. It wasn't even for sale, and we were able to purchase it. It has an apartment attached to it right together. Um, a mother-in-law suite is what it's called. So we were able to move in my, my father-in-law and mother-in-law two years ago this month. Um, actually, it would be this weekend. Uh -huh. And um, it, was, it was in the month of October, and we were able to spend four months with my father-in-law before he passed away um, at our home. Every single day of those four months, I felt so blessed that I had a company that I was able to work from home and have the opportunity to be with him and help them so he wouldn't have had to go into the nursing home. We had no idea that that was going to be how it transpired, but little did I know that when I gave up teaching a passion, something that I loved so much, that I was going to find a new passion for taking care of my kiddos that were home, taking care of my in-laws that were home, and being able to be a part of their life that I didn't even know. When I started this business, I really had no clue that I would enjoy being there, helping them so incredibly much. Here we are, 10 years after starting my full-time Mary Kay career business, and tons and tons has happened. I look back into the last six to eight months, and for me personally, um, tons Oh, I brought the cleanup. This is up because I'm hoping. Um, my father last Thanksgiving got very sick, very sick, and to the point where he, they put him on hospice, and they were going, they told us to come say our goodbyes, and for a 100 days straight, he was in the hospital, and he was in recovery, and we had no clue if he was going to make it or not. There was one point where he was so weak that we were literally moving the sheet from underneath of him just to reposition him to take the bed sores into different positions. There was one point where he couldn't feed himself for two months, and so we had to feed him every single day. And at the same time, my mother-in-law gets diagnosed, my mother gets diagnosed with breast cancer. And at that point, my dad is so weak in bed that he can't even sit up to give my mom a hug. We're in the hospital room. And he says, come here, babe. After she got off the phone and found out that she has cancer, my mom walked over to him and had to bend down and they couldn't even embrace because he couldn't lift his arms. My dad is the strongest person I know. He has built a business himself, an insurance business that my husband has been able to take over. He was an entrepreneur who taught me strength, who taught me passion, who taught me to work hard. He has a park in our town named after him because of everything that he does, because of the servant leader that he is. And that man pushed through. He's at home today. He's still weak, 
but he has gotten stronger. He has made me stronger. And he's made me have a whole new appreciation for the opportunity to have a business of your own that you can go and be with your family when you need to. And you can put things on hold if you need to. And you can be with those that you love if you need to. My sister is in the hospital. She's in the nursing, whatever, the medical field. And there was a moment she hadn't been there for seven days. And she says, I need to know, do I have to take off work? And I said, yes, you need to be here today. They told us it's time. And she took off work. And her boss was so angry at her because they didn't have anybody to line up to do the ultrasound that day that she was scheduled for. I didn't have that pressure. I was able to be there whenever my parents needed me. My father and his entrepreneur business was, get, was granted trips every year, company trips. And he had the opportunity to take me on two of them. You know where the first one was? Hawaii. I have a reason, a desire, to be in Hawaii this year. He has made me a stronger person. And I want him to see why. I want to be in a position where I make other people stronger. I am the most amazing unit. Every single day they make me feel stronger. I had one consultant in my unit for eight years. Eight years, you guys, and we never spoke. <laughs> we never spoke. <laughs> There's a whole other story about why that happened. <laughs> but I felt a nudge from God one day to pick up my phone and call her. She was going to finish this business because it had been almost a year that she hadn't placed an order. <coughs> I walked out of my office. I thought, why? God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I call her because, you know what, she... They have a business for eight years. Hasn't really done anything since then. If I call her, she probably didn't know who I am. So I walked out of my office, and I got smacked in the face. I, I called her nudge. I guess I got yanked. <laughs> got yanked back into my office. I thought I was going to call her. I, again, I sat at my computer looking at her phone number, and I decided to not call her. <laughs> Walked out of my office again, and I got yanked back in. <laughs> fine, fine, I'll call her. I picked up the phone. And I called the number in front of me, and she picked up the phone, and I said, Hey, Raquel, this is Buffy. I said, I don't know if you remember me or not, but I'm your sales director, Mary Kay. She says, of course I remember you, Buffy. And I said, well, it's been a year since you placed an order, Mary Kay, and I just want to give you a gentle reminder that if you don't place an order this month, your business will be completed. And that would kind of make me sad. I'm kind of thinking, I don't know why it makes me sad, but... Throw that in there. <laughs> I don't have a relationship with this woman, but it sounds good. <laughs> and she says, well, thank you for the phone call, but I want you to know that I have something new that I'm pursuing in my life. I quit my job about four months ago, and I've been called for something different. And, um, but thank you. Mary Kay, she's not going to be in my life right now. And I said, okay. And I said, well, if you don't mind, can I at least ask what that call is? And Mr. Calderon continued to say that she has felt the nudge from God. She's been called to minister to women, but she doesn't know how she's going to do it. She needs a vehicle to get in front of women. She wants to speak to women in the masses. She wants to share them, share with them what Jesus Christ has done and what he can do for each and every one of you. He said... <clears throat> <laughs> Do you know what the philosophy is behind Mary Kay? And she said, huh, I know. And I shared with her what our value system is, what our philosophy system is. And she says, I'll think about that, I'll pray on that, and I'll get back to you. I said, well, <laughs> you got about three days. <laughs> the end of the month is coming up. <laughs> Long story short, as you all know, that person is Ms. Raquel Arona. You guys, I placed that phone call on February 26th of this year. Raquel Arona may not be one of our newest sales directors if it wasn't for a phone call 
if it wasn't for the obedience, if it wasn't for me picking up that phone call, that phone and calling her, but also if it wasn't for the obedience of her asking him, is this where I should be? I remember her response to me was, okay, Buffy, I prayed about it. And I said, what you hear? She says, I heard that this is what I should do, but he also told me it's not going to be easy. I said, are you ready for it? And she said, let's go. Tell me what I need to do. People like that make us feel stronger. stronger. I remember going down to uh, Colorado to visit with her and a lot of her women in that area the first time and kind of forgot about this until we talked about the face fast yesterday. And for some reason, I was doing a fasting um, at that time, and I asked God, okay, this is weird, but I've never fasted before. I don't know what to fast on. I don't think it should be food because I need my food. I'm arguing, I, you know. And he told me I needed to fast on makeup. And I laughed. But what? That's not a fast. And he says, no, I'm serious. Go without makeup for as long as you need to and fast. I don't know, but see, I've got to go meet these new women in this Colorado area, and this woman who's really sharp, and uh, she's probably going to be leading me to lots of great women. I've got to make them <laughs> So I did it. Mm -hmm. I fasted without makeup. I don't know how long it was. I really didn't keep track. But the first time I went to Colorado, Nebraska, yeah. or Colorado, <laughs> Nebraska, <laughs> I didn't have any makeup on. And I learned so much during that time, so much. I was feeling stronger. The fact that Candace Shilke, she had actually said no to Raquel and I during Raquel's first fast fat, fat call. Um, and Raquel actually kept asking her, and the fact that Mike Strong actually needed to okay Candace to even be in this company because she had, had been in before, and the fact that she started her business at the end of May but is literally ranked number four in the Pearl Seminar right now. Yes. <sighs> Guys, that makes us feel stronger. I actually had a customer, her name was Brandy Boudreaux, and she was in love with all of the products, and she saw the passion that I had for this company, and she decided that it was time for her to not be in another company. It was time for her to be a consultant to Mary Kay and host a party with her mom. And I, she has seen, I have seen her transpire over time. She has seen me trans transpire over time. And seeing that just totally makes us feel stronger. The fact that I facialed this young girl for her 12th birthday party years ago, and she remained a customer of mine all throughout high school. I did her 13th birthday party, or I did her 16th birthday party, and I did her prom makeup, and it was only right for me to call her up this summer before she left for college to do some college makeup. And the fact that she became a new consultant that night, she recruited her friend, Miss Ashley Chastik. Ashley's making things work right now while she's in college, and she recruited her second mama, Mama Laura Horner. And Laura's actually a friend of mine, an acquaintance, actually. In our little small town, I've known her. Our daughter, daughters are in the same class. But someone that I really wasn't close with, and Mary Case actually allowed us to get to know each other in a way that I really didn't expect, and I'm very grateful for that. The relationships that God puts in front of us, you guys, it makes us feel stronger. stronger. The fact that there's a woman, her name is Brenda Ard. She's been in my unit also for eight years. She has loyalty and a dedication like no other. She's seen the good times. She's seen the bad times. But she's stayed there. She's been with us. She comes to things sometimes. But there's times when I call her and I'll say, Brenda, this is what we need. And she's in. The loyalty from women in our unit like that makes us directors feel stronger. I work with the most fabulous Central Nebraska directors. They literally help me share a brain. <laughs> Without the three of us, we don't have a complete brain. <laughs> All three of us need to be together to have a complete brain. And it makes the consultants and all of us in that area feel stronger. We were sitting in our, hotel, our, our room last night, and we were thinking of law, uh, so many of the stories throughout the consultants in here right now and um, consultant who came into the room last night who I adore. And I know 
that is going to make a difference in this national area. And I think of women like Shandalyn who came up last night and was so bold yesterday. You've got to see all of you sharing your stories and having the confidence to know that you are going to grow makes all of us feel stronger. stronger. I think of our new national area and the amazing new directors that I seriously look at each and every one of you and I can think of so many things that I just want to bawl my eyes out. You've seen me bawl my eyes out <laughs> because of how you make each of and every one of us grow because of all of your skills and each individual thing that we all have together that makes such a national area so complete. It makes us feel stronger. stronger. The fact that we have this triumphant 20 growing and will be completed by the end of this year led by an amazing national director makes us feel stronger. stronger. The fact that I had the best adopted director for my Raquel. Everything that you did and how you opened up your arms and you truly showed the go-give spirit from the very first phone call that I gave out to you. <laughs> Thank you. You make me feel stronger. We have the most amazing national sales director ever. Mm -hmm. She has the brilliance and she is gifted at teaching. She's so crafted in her speaking. She's over and beyond the definition of go-give. And because of her, we all feel stronger. We have a company, a company that has huge goals this year. Goals to double the amount of leaders, to double the amount of sales directors that we have in our company right now in one year. The abundant goals, the abundant thinking that this company has, the brick wall that they're building just to show the strength in our foundation that we are having, that we're beginning for the next 50 years. Having a company like that, that we work with, <clears throat> makes us all stronger. stronger. Last, we have a God. A God who can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever hope, dream, or imagine. A God who is greater, who wants us to open our eyes to see what he sees, not what we see with our own eyes. He has the infinite power and the potential He's a God that doesn't expect us to go back to start when we mess up. Think of a video game. You don't have to start over. You screwed up. You got off track. But by his grace, we have the opportunity to just start off. Start where we had kind of left behind. Figure it out and keep going where, where you were, where you had got left off. We have the Son of Man who did not come to be served, but to actually serve and to give us his life as a ransom for so many of us, for being in a company that allows us to actually get to serve other people just as Jesus did. It makes us all feel stronger. stronger. And last, knowing that Jesus had to get low, he had to sacrifice, he had to be humiliated. So many of us feel like that. We all have gotten low. We've all been broken. But Jesus... We had to do that also before he was lifted high. And it reminds us that sometimes the lower you get and the more you fall, the more mistakes that you make, the higher God can lift us. And the higher we're lifted, the stronger we are. So don't let any no's, don't let any mistakes or any wrong lip liner sales, <laughs> any team members who actually go to other teams or any family or personal issues, or cancellations, don't let any of that hold you down, break you down, but just know that there's a plan, and that his plan is what's making you stronger. stronger. I know that some of you literally felt that you had to move mountains to get here, and that you had to take off work, you had to rearrange schedules, you had children, you had husbands at home, things weren't easy. Decisions were made at the last minute. Your house might be messy when you get home. You have laundry to do. Life is gonna be there. But I know, and you know, we all know, that just because you actually came and just because you are here, you are all now stronger. stronger. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.